Thank you so very much. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to this broadcast, and it's a very, very agent broadcast because this is a wake-up call to Africa. It is something that the Lord ministered to me and told me to deal with, and it was two years ago, and then last year, and then recently, and then just a few days ago. We're talking about even today, this day, so that I should actually come to you and give you a warning. So never say you were not warned. This is a prophetic warning to every minister, every young minister, every Christian, layman. It doesn't matter who you are as long as you are a Christian. This broadcast is for you. So tell somebody, tell somebody we are live with what God is saying in the hour. And as a prophet to a dispensation, a prophet to Christianity, I have to tell you this is my mandate to actually do this, what I'm about to say. It is very, very important. And I want you to understand the revelation that God has given me, and I will deal with it from a scriptural point of view, bring it in with what God has said to support what God has said, because anything that you do with no support of scripture is not validated by the Holy Ghost. So it is very, very important that you understand. So that's why we, end, we titled this message, or rather this warning, don't say you were not warned. Don't say you were not warned. So this is a wake-up call to Africa. It is something that touches the whole world, but especially Africa. Wake up. Now, what God ministered to me, uh, I want to take it from the book of Revelation, chapter number 9. Um, I want you to see something here that, that you, 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 you get to, to a level of understanding what God is saying. Let's go to verse number 11. And I want you to see it. I want you to see it. I want you to see it. Are you getting this? It says, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. Are you, are you getting this? It is something that is very, very valid to bring a warning when God has said, warn people. He says, and they had a king over them. They had a king over them. And his name was Abaddon. And Abaddon means destroyer. That this one was a destroyer. And the other name was also Apollyon, or rather Apollon. And the word Apollon there is, it also means destroyer. Now, if you go back, let me give you another scripture so that you understand. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? It is very, very important. Lezo Kabai, no afraid I see. This is the book um, of Job, chapter number 28. Chapter number 28 of Job. And we are going to come back to it. Please stay tuned. Call somebody. Tell them we are alive right this minute. Don't say you were not warned. Now, notice what it says. Destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. Please. In light of what has been happening around the world and a lot of exposures that people call exposures and a lot of men of God being attacked and even Christians being attacked, I want you to learn what God is saying. Not just hear it, learn it. That's why we're getting into the scripture to show you. But this is verse number 22. This is destruction and death say we have had the fame thereof. But what was the fame of? Are you getting this? If you get from verse number one, and we start from verse number one, Job chapter 28, verse number one, I want you to see it. I want you to see it. Surely there is a vein for the silver and a place for gold where they find it. So there, there is a location where we can find these things. Iron is taken out of the earth and brass is molten out of the stone. Please listen and call somebody now. This is, this is the most important message you have ever received, and you have to get it, especially this year. Out of the earth. Do you understand? Verse number two. It says, iron is taken out of the earth. Brass is molten out of the stone. So we know where gold comes from. We know where iron comes from. We know where brass comes from. Mm. Mm. He setteth an end to darkness. That means he even know where darkness is. And search it out the perfection. He knows the quality of darkness. The properties of it. God knows where it is. And people can find it. Even signs. You know, they, they, they just, 
uh, got the idea of how to weigh even the weight of fire. <laughs> so it is possible that science is able to do all these things. And people know the stones in the darkness and the shadow of death. Are you getting this? The flood breaketh out from the inhabitant, even the waters for, forgotten of the foot. They are dried up. They are gone away from men. He says, all these things, can you can, you can analyze them and see them. Mm. As for the earth, out of it cometh bread. Wow. And out of it turned out as it were fire. He's saying, if you go to the deep of the earth, to the center, you'll find fire. And this is proven. There's molten magma there. All right? And he says here, but out of the earth, you can even get food. So he's saying all these things are not, please listen. The stones of it are in the place of sapphires, and it is dust of gold. Mm. There is a path which no fowl knoweth. No, no, it says there's a path. So fowls know a path, but there is a path which they don't know, which the voucher's eye has not seen. The lion swerves have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. Are you getting this? Yeah. He put it forth his hand upon the rock. Are you getting it? He overturned the mountains by the roots. In other words, he knows even the depth. Everything is known. Even science, people around the world, laymen, whether intelligent men, sages and seers, they can search it out. He carried out the rivers among the rocks. This is none. And his eyes seeth every precious thing. God can see it now. But there is a path that birds have not seen. So there is a path somebody doesn't know. But everything is known. But it's known by the person who can do these things. He's the only one who knows. Hmm. But other things are revealed for men to know. Please, this is a warning. Don't say you were not warned. He binds the flood from overflowing. This man, this entity, this thing has an ability to know these things. But men don't know other things. But men know other things. So there is a wisdom applied or rather applicable to men. There is wisdom that you can take. There is understanding that you can take. There is knowledge that you can take. But there is a certain path men don't reach. He binded the flood from overflowing and the thing that is he uh, bringeth he forth to light. In other words, he's saying there is a thing that only God can get to. But where shall wisdom be found? Where shall wisdom be found? I don't know if you're getting this. And where is the place of understanding? Do you see what he's saying? Where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Then he says, men knoweth the price thereof. <laughs> men knoweth not the price thereof. In other words, everything you know, but there is a certain level in God, which is called the wisdom of God, that is difficult for men to decipher, to know. This is a warning. Now hear this. He says, men knoweth not the price thereof. Men knoweth not the price thereof. That means there is a certain price to that thing called wisdom. This type of wisdom from God, there is a price to it. There are men of God who have suffered for the wisdom. We have gone through a lot to get to this wisdom that, oh, I know now what's happening. People don't know. They wake up today and there is a documentary about this man. Oh, he did this. Oh, he did this. In your heads, you are so wood-winged because you have no wisdom of God. To actually look at it and go like, wait, wait a minute. Is there something happening behind the scenes before I start on this man? Whether you don't like a Nigerian preacher or you don't like a Namibian preacher, a Zambian preacher, a Zimbabwean preacher, an American preacher, you have to think behind the scenes what is really taking place. Did these people just wake up and go like, we're going to do something here. Yes, for, for, for public uh, knowledge, they need to know this. We, 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 are, we, are, we are custodians of truth. You gotta wake up. For all you know, they might actually have been doing a very brilliant job. The investigation might actually be brilliant and true, but the, the, the motivation for it 
might be demonic and diabolic. So listen, don't say you have not been warned. I know what I'm talking about. The Lord visited me and told me a lot of things that I'm going to tell you today. Now here it is. Here it is. Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. This is, look at it, verse number 12 again. Look at verse number 12. But where shall we find wisdom? He's saying this wisdom is not found on earth. So you don't wake up and go like, I know, I know, I know a lot. I, I've, I've got knowledge. I went to school and I can tell, I can read between the lines. No, this wisdom that you need is beyond the curtain of time. It is something that is not found here. It's found in the realm of the spirit. And it is only found by a certain class of beings that fraternize with divinity. Men that are able to touch divinity. Men that are able to touch the veins of God, the powers of God, and hear the powers of God. And go with the heartbeat of God. Those are the people that you should be like, let me listen and hear. Call somebody. We're about to reveal something so important that you need to hear it. You and your friends need to hear it. But where shall we find wisdom? Away is the place of understanding. Now, men know what the price thereof. Neither is it found on the land of the living. <laughs> I don't know. Now, 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 you can say, what if I go to the deep? The depth says it is not in me. And the sea says it is not with me. That means here, yeah, there are things that have gone beyond the curtain of time and seen this type of wisdom. And they are demonic entities, or rather, princes and princesses in the realm of the spirit that have actually understood by going deep into the deep to search for that wisdom. They are wise. They are surrounded with wisdom everywhere, but wisdom of this earth. But they are to go into the deep. Now hear this. Hear this. Let's go. The deep says it is not in me. The deep says it is not in me. And the sea says, it is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold. Even if you bring gold, you cannot be given that wisdom. Bring any kind of money you want. That wisdom, you can't buy it. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. I don't care the bullion of gold you bring. The silver you bring, you cannot buy that wisdom. So you can't say, no, I'm so learned. No, your education doesn't matter here. You can say, I said under this man, I said under this man of God, I heard this man of God saying this. Yeah, you heard him, but did you hear God? I, it cannot be valued with gold of affair, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. You can't. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of gold, even of fine gold. That's Job 28, verse number 17. Hear this. No nation shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. See, you can't even mention coral or, or, or pearls to try and buy those things. Maybe you say, maybe gold might not work. Let me take pearls and corals. It can, it's, the price is far above rubies. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. This is something. Hear this. The toppers of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Neither shall it be valued for pure gold. Forget fine gold, pure. That means 100%. Mm. Whence then cometh wisdom? Where shall we find it? And where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living mm. and kept close from the fowls of the air. That means it's in another expanse. Okay. How you see? Why would the fowls of the air be close to it? Because heaven is a location. That's why the Bible says, heaven above. We don't know how many meters, but it's heaven above. So we know the direction of heaven. And hell be not beneath. So we know the direction of hell. Destruction and death say. Now here it is. We went to the book of Revelation chapter number 9. And we realized something in verse number 11. Go, go back. Go back to verse number 11. They had a king over them. Are you getting this? Whose name was what? Abaddon. 
which means what? Destruction. And the other one called Apollon. Then we go to Job 28. Let's go to Job 28. Are you still there? Are you still there? Yeah. Some people around the world um, are understanding it. And we are in Job 28. Remember Job 28. Verse number 22. This is destruction. Destruction. I want you to look at the word destruction there. It is the word Abaddon. So this is not destruction as as destroying. It is a demon. Now the demon we are finding in the book of Revelation is as end and Abaddon. Abaddon. La Liga Zakos. And Abaddon and Maveth. These are two demons that went in search of this wisdom. You, you're missing. I wish you could understand it. Now, when we read this, if you read this without understanding the book of Revelation, you think we're talking about just destruction and death. No, he's talking about a certain level of angelic, demonic angelic beings, so to speak, fallen angels that went in search of wisdom. To try and kill humanity. Destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our eyes and with, with our ears. God understands the way thereof. Now, they realize after searching everywhere, they couldn't find wisdom. And they said, only God understands. And he knoweth the place thereof. He knows where it stays. Mm. For he looketh to the ends of the earth and seeth under the world heaven. But remember, we have already been told that it's not under heaven. So they are, they are discussing, so they don't know the truth. The second thing is under the heaven. Mm-hmm. To make the weight for the winds, and the, he weigheth the waters by measure. He says, the, the men who can do this, the entity that is able to weigh waters, this one is the one who knows the way of wisdom. When he made a decree for the rain, and the way for the lightning to thunder, or of the thunder. Mm-hmm. When then he did see it, hey, says when he was creating the world, wisdom was there. <laughs> Most people do not understand. <laughs> says wisdom was there. Remember, this is a warning. So you're gonna get a warning now. And declare it, he prepared it. Yea, and such it did out. He prepared it, he made it available. And then he searched out wisdom, opened it, perused it. No, it's not a browse. It's, he perused it. Are you getting this? <clears throat> and to many he said, behold, the fear of the Lord. Huh. Now imagine demons got to know it. He says the fear of the Lord is wisdom. But they themselves don't have it. But demons fear God. If you look in the book of James, he says it. The demons fear God. You do well. And then they tremble. If you fear God, you do well. The demons fear him and then tremble. So it is the fear that they have. But when he says the fear of the Lord here, he's talking about the awe of God. It's beyond fear. It's an awe. Demons don't have an awe of God. They fear him. And to depart from evil is understanding. At least we've already been told what wisdom is. And departing from evil is understanding. Here we, here, here we go. It is important. It is important. Are you getting this? Yes, you got it, right? Yes, now here we go. I want, you to, I want to take you to the book of Revelation chapter number 6 and verse number 9. This now is that warning. If we, before we get to it, I want you to go to refer, um, Proverbs 4, verse number 7. Proverbs 4, verse number 7. Proverbs 4, verse number 7. I want you to get it. Because we're talking about it. Wisdom is the principal thing. Fearing God is a principal thing. I don't know if you're getting this. <laughs> now, go back to, go back to, to this verse we had on, right? Job 28. 28. Behold, the fear of the Lord is wisdom. Departing from evil is understanding. Let's go back to Proverbs 4. Wisdom is the principal thing. What does it mean? Fearing God is the principal thing. 
Therefore, fear God. And with all your fearing, run away from evil. Do you see? That's what Proverbs 4, 7 means. Now, here is your warning. Don't say, the prophet did not warn you. And this, take it everywhere. Give it to somebody. Take the link. Send it to somebody. Send it to every Christian and say, this, just watch this. It doesn't matter how, what they feel about me, what they feel about another man of God, what they feel about anybody. Send it. Now, let's go. Revelation 6, verse number 9. And when he had opened the sixth seal, I saw under the altar souls of them that were killed for the word of God. That means being killed for the word of God is not new. Hear what God told me. He told me, warn, warn the people and warn every Christian, especially in Africa. We have started to move in a mighty way in the apostolic, in the prophetic, in teaching, in evangelism, in pastoral duties. I have moved in a mighty way. And I'm about to review a new level that the world will look at Africa and say, that's the stage for my coming back. Now, the world will begin to see Africa as the location to see the spiritual side of God. Let me explain to you. Let me repeat this because I've said it over and over again. Christianity started in Israel as a relationship. Went to Rome and it became a religion. Went to Britain, America, and the Western world and it became a business. Came to Africa, we made it spiritual. So now is a time where people are going to come back to Africa. Do you understand that, that, that Africa, the, the original name for Africa was not Africa? It was close to the garden, the garden of God, the, 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 the beginning of mankind. That was the meaning of the first name for Africa. And the European world and the Western world came to change it, to make it a dark continent to make it a land for black people, for dark people, a land for darkness. And nobody around Africa is protesting that and saying we need to go back to our name. Because anything that a white man says to a black man, and remember I'm using black here because that's what you call black people. I don't call black people black people. But let me just use black. All right. Now hear this. There is a warning that is coming, and I want you to see this. He says, warn the people and tell them, this is a time that is dark for every preacher, every Christian, every establishment. Because the devil is coming. But while the devil is coming, he's coming under the guise of men of the cloth. And under the guise of journalism. And under the guise of media houses. And it's going to be so rampant that they will follow a man, another man, another woman of God, another man of God, another woman of God, another man of God. That this is now the time to unite. Unite again as powers behind this because it is setting the stage for the Antichrist. And most Christians will not go, especially here in Africa. Many people will not be taken by the rapture. Because the enemy is moving in so fast. Notice what the Bible says. It says, if it was even possible to even deceive the very elect. This is after, of course, after Jesus comes back. The second coming, which is called the parousia, not the rapture. The parousia. But imagine that he will even try to deceive the very elect. What about you? We are the elect, I hear. Hear this. When I say we are the elect, I mean every Christian. But understand that the devil will even go to the extent of saying, I'm going to deceive the very elect. Hear me. Hear me well. Here is what God showed me. Revelation 6, verse number 9. The people were crying under the altar. Why were they crying? He says, saw them under the altar, the souls of them that were slain of the word of God, and for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O oh Lord, how
How long, O oh Lord, holy and true, do you not judge the world and avenge our blood on them? Here is the issue. On them that are on the earth now. Notice these people were killed way before we were on earth. But they are saying avenge our blood. We were killed. They are already with the Lord. They are dead. And they are saying we need you to avenge our blood. Those who killed us are already dead. But we have not been avenged. It's an unfair cry that you are dead because somebody in the Old Testament killed you. But we who are alive now have to suffer for the sins of somebody that died already after having committed the crime of killing you. I repeat, Revelation 6, verse number 9 to 11, tells us that there are people, souls under the altar, crying to God. They are dead. They are crying that God should kill us who are on earth today. For the crimes of some people that we have never met, we don't even know. And they are specific that they should kill the people who are on earth today. Specific. I don't know if you're getting this. And the white robes were given unto them, one, uh, every one of them, and it was said, that's verse number 11, it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Huh? That means God said, wait a minute. There are some people who are still dying on earth now. So I want to revenge. So I need some more people to die. Then when we fulfill the number of people who are dead, who die, then I will avenge the, pe the death, your death, by killing the people who are on earth today. Uh, I don't know whether I'm, I'm still with you or you. Uh, now, here we go. So we know there are souls under, or under the altar who are crying that people should be killed who are on earth today. Yet they didn't live in our time. They lived way back in the Old Testament and died, and God didn't avenge them. So God is saying, don't worry. There's a time I'm just waiting so that I can see that people, more people are killed by the devil. Then I will come back and avenge you. Let's see. So we read in the book of Job, and we read in the, from the book of Revelation that there is destruction. Apollon, which is destruction, which is the same word for that. One is in the Greek, one is in the Hebrew. And then we went to Job 28, and we discovered that the, these demons were searching for a way to find wisdom so that they could kill us. And then they realized the wisdom that God talks about is the fear of the Lord and running away from evil, is understanding. So they realized they can't have those qualities. So it's a no-go area for them. Now here it says here, I want, you, I want us to zoom into that kind of knowledge that God has, that type of wisdom that he has. Look, chapter number 11. Now, I want to read from verse number 46. Look, chapter number 11, verse 46. And he said, Woe unto you also, lawyers, for you led men with burdens, grievous to the bone. Ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Listen to me. This is a warning. And woe unto you, for you build the graves, the sepulchres of prophets, and your fathers killed them. So you come here, you say, this is the prophet, some years, I went to Israel, and there are graves there. Said so you build them, yet your fathers killed them. You should cry. You are making them tourist locations. Yet you killed the prophet. Truly you bear witness that ye allowed the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them and you built graves. Here we go. Now here is the warning. God showed me an army of media houses even buying people. Not only that, remember, we spoke about it. It's, uh, it's actually um, 
uh, a prophecy that has already been fulfilled. It was spoken last year and even a year before that. We spoke of these things. That men, who, men of God will be a loggerheads with each other. They will even pay members to speak against prophets, to speak against teachers, to speak against apostles, pastors. But my mandate as a prophet to Christianity, as a prophet to a dispensation, this is a mandate that at one time I dropped the ball until God said, support every man that I've sent. As long as I've sent them, support them. I will deal with their faults, says the Lord. But now here it is. Here it is. Come back. I will send, this is, listen to this. This says the wisdom of God. And that word wisdom is the word Sophia. It means when wisdom has reached boiling point, the complete wisdom, when you search out God and say, God, what do you have? When you get into the depth of God's wisdom, you find Sophia. There are three types of wisdom. But Sophia is like the complete one. This is it. Jesus, when he walked on water, he used Sophia. That, that was the, the wisdom he used. It ignored viscosity. Molecular density of water. It ignored it. That's wisdom. When Jesus spat on his, on his fingers and took the spittle and put it in somebody's eye and said, see, that was wisdom. What type of science is he using? That's the wisdom they were looking for. Thanatos and Abaddon. Abaddon and Moved. They were looking for that wisdom. Now he says, therefore also says the wisdom of God, since you have fathers that killed prophets, this is what I have thought as clever as I can be, as wise as I can be as God. And there is no wisdom beyond God. But now as God, using my uttermost and top level, as you say it in this day and age, top shelf wisdom, I will send you prophets. No problem with that. So God's wisdom said, I'm going to send you prophets. And who am I going to send? Apostles. You know, there was an apostle who said, it's going to be a dark moment. It's going to be. And people were expecting me to come out and say, he is for us, he is what? No. I've already told you, that apostle is a man of God. He might have his own problem, like I have my own problem. We might have our differences, like we have differences. All right? But that doesn't make discount a man. No. It doesn't discount his calling. And this is a mandate that I've been given by God to support what he has sent. But remember, he's sending men. They are called men of God. Before you put of God, there is a man. All right? Therefore also says the wisdom of God. I will send them prophets and who? And apostles. And remember what the scripture says. The church is built upon the foundation of prophets and apostles. And some of them they shall kill. What? I thought this was your wisdom. How can you be so wise and say, I'm sending you prophets so you can kill them? So this is your wisdom? So you send prophets so, you can, so we kill them? And some of them they shall slay and persecute. What? So your utmost wisdom, your top shelf wisdom, your high level of wisdom is to send prophets so that they can be killed or persecuted. This is you. This is God thinking, I'm now wise. This is the wisdom that I'm using now. But there is a reason to it. What is the reason? The reason is Revelation 6, 9, 11. I'm going to send you something that will avenge you. You, the souls that were killed in the Old Testament. I'm going to kill people on earth to avenge you. Let's go back. The blood. So is my this? So that they can pursue it. So that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. Wait there. You know, imagine, God says, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to send you prophets because I want to find a loophole to kill you. Because this is a dispensation of grace. I can't kill you. But because... I'm looking for a loophole to punish the inhabitants of the earth now under a dispensation of grace. I have no access to try and find how to kill people because I'm under grace. You are under grace. I've given you a dispensation for grace. And under grace, it is what I've done, not what you do. But I have some office that is very rooted in the Old Testament. 
that when you touch it, you touch me. So it says the prophetic is there. It's still here. Verse number 49 and 50. Are you getting this? Therefore also says the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall persecute, and some of them they shall slay. Now hear me. Some people say, you know what? This, this prophet has nothing wrong with him. There is no scandal whatsoever. People are not talking about him. He's a very nice man. You are lying. Notice what the Bible says. It's some of them they will persecute and some of them they will kill. That means not all prophets will receive that type of persecution. There are some who will receive persecution to a certain level. There are some who will be arrested. Some who will be killed. Some who will just be persecuted. It's levels. If the devil is not fighting you, it's because you're walking side by side. I'm not facing you. Here, here, we, here, here, here we go. Notice, he says, this is the wisdom. So that the blood of the prophets, which were in, killed in the Old Testament, will be required of this generation. So God will say, that prophet who died in the Old Testament, I want to punish you for killing him. You say, I don't know that prophet. He said, yes, but the moment you persecuted him, you opened the route, a route for me to kill you. I'm holding the roots of my wrath. And now I found a route to kill you. So there are so many people who will actually get into the trap of opposing people. You oppose this prophet. You oppose this prophet. You oppose this prophet. All these prophets, some are dead already. It says, now I have found a way. And I'm going to punish you. I'm going to kill you. Because... When others were coming with persecution, you did not notice that you were fulfilling Luke 11, verse number 49. Therefore, says the wisdom of God, I'm going to send them prophets. And why do I send them prophets? So you can kill them. Now, you, you, you're missing it. You're missing it. I, I, I know you're, not, you're missing it. Let's go to, to Hosea, Hosea, Hosea 9, verse number 6, 7, and 8. I want to show you something. Then we go back to Luke 11. For lo, they are gone because of destruction. Egypt shall gather them up. Memphis shall bury them. And the pleasant places of their silver. Nettles shall possess them. Thorns shall be in their tabernacles. I just wanted you to get a, uh, a pretext of the text. Um, the days of visitation are come. The days of revenge. What is that revenge? Avenging my people who are crying under the altar. It is now here. The days of recompense are come. Israel, even the world, even you. You might be in Nigeria, where Prophet T.B. Joshua is being attacked. You might be in America, where Kim Clement is attacked. You might be in Zimbabwe, where Yubere Angel is attacked. You might be in Nigeria, where Pastor Chris is attacked. Bishop Oyedepo, uh, G.U.O. Adeboye. Oh, all these men of God. Let me explain to you. You might be even in America. Where bishop is suffering. Listen, I'm by no means saying he didn't do this, he didn't do that, he didn't do this, he didn't do that. That's not my calling. My calling is to stand and say Christianity is under attack. Wake up. Wake up. It will be too late because I understand your point. Your point is, this is not my man of God. My papa is saying this. My papa prophesied it. I prophesied this issue about T.B. Joshua. I prophesied it. Why don't you don't see me gloating over it? Hear this. Because I know the calling. Hear this. And the days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. You shall know it. Because the prophet is taken as a fool. You can read the comments. Polish man. I've already, I knew it. It was evil. You got, you knew it. By what wisdom? By the one the one Abaddon and Move were looking for? Or by the one that is on earth, that can be found by any man? The spiritual man is a madman. In other words, the days when the days of my avenging my people who are crying in the book of Revelation 6, uh, 9 to 11, comes, when that day comes, look around, the prophet will be looked at as a fool, seen as a foolish man, an idiot. 
And the spiritual man who tries to be spiritual will be seen as a madman. I saw one video of Prophet Kakande there. You know Prophet Kakande prophesied about my third born, my third, yeah, prophesied about it. And prophesied about my fourth son. Like, oh, you have two, you think that's finished. No, you're going to have another one like this, like this. And made, and made mention that they were boys. This Prophet Kakande, he came to, to 47 uh, Empire Street, which was in, um, in, oh, East, in, in um, Manchester. This was our third venue. He came there after the, the watch had gone. He said, I want to visit you. He just watched me on TV. And then we had to call back some of the members and say, come, there is a service. Just a small one. I want you to be prayed for by this man of God. And he came there, said things he had no way of knowing. Went into even dreams. So when I see people laughing at him like, oh, he's a joke, he's a whatever. I'm like, wait a minute. I, I know something here. Listen to me. It's different to say, this is a joke. To say, Hubert Angel is a joke. He's a liar. He's not a man of God. He's all fake. Wait a minute. How am I able to tell you on this day and on this day there's a plane called this and the, the colors of the plane is going to be and it's going to go down? How am I able to tell you? How am I able to tell you that it will be on a Monday or a Wednesday when that happens? So you see, when you look at him and you, you rubbish, it is nothing. I look at it and go like, you, you don't mean it. You really don't mean it because if you knew what we know, even the same T.B. Joshua, I used to communicate with him, talk to him here and there. And there were things that you would mention while you were in your room, on your own. You would mention there, 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 there. You would mention he was sharp to that extent. But now, let's, let's not. Like C.S. Lewis said, was Jesus, either Jesus was the son of God or he was a madman at the level of a person who thinks he's a poached egg. Says, but never say he was a wise man. He never left that option to us. That's what C.S. Lewis said. He said, you either come up with one side and stand on one side or stand on the other, but never come with a flim's nonsense of he's just a wise man. Jesus was a wise man. No. He was worshipped and accepted worship. He said, me and my father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. If I have been so long with you, yet you don't know me, Philip, he's not leaving you with an option to call him a wise guy. T.B. Joshua never left us with an option that we can call him, oh, just a clever crook. No. It's either he was of the devil or he was of God. You can't be in the middle. You cannot be. You can't be in the middle. Oral robbers never left us with an option that we can say he was just a crook. No, there were healings that oral robbers did that up to this day. Ah, mind-blowing. He never left us. Kenneth again never left us with this option of, no, nah, he was just a crook, a conman. Never. There were two alternatives. He might have been of the devil, of God, 100%. The choice is, there, is then yours. But notice here. Let's go back. Go back. The spiritual man is a madman. For the multitude of your iniquity and your great hatred, because you hate this man so much, you are now hearing your own mind talking. Oh, man, I wish I could really talk to you about this. I don't know, I don't know if you understand. Are, are, you, are you? In fact, let's go to, to Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, and I'll come, we come back to Hosea. Ezekiel chapter number 13, verse number 1, and I'll show you. This is because of the multitude of your sins and your hatred. You see a prophet as a foolish man, yet you don't know what the Western media is doing. Look at all these documentaries. Have got white people and Muslims fighting Christians. You don't know. You think this is an expose. What happened to African media? Why don't you rise up African media? Do your research. Do your own thing. Come back with damning exposures. That's all right. But we have a person who was a colonizer come back to you and tell you they love you. That's why they're exposing your people to you. Wake up, Africa. Something is afoot. There's something behind the scenes. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, this is Ezekiel 13, verse number one. Some people who are, listen, it doesn't matter what you think of me, how you love me or hate me. It doesn't matter. This is the word of God. Listen to it. If you don't believe I hear, I hate from God, no problem. At least I'm reading scriptures. Hear the scriptures. Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say 
that thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. You didn't hear me. It says they are prophesying out of their own imaginations. Why? You go back to Hosea 9.7. Are you getting this? Let's go to Hosea 9.7. I don't know if you are getting this. The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense. The prophet is seen as a fool. The spiritual man is a madman. Because of the number, the multitude of your sins. And your hatred for these men. That's number eight. And the watchman of Ephraim was with my God. Listen to this. But the prophet is a snare of a fowler in all his ways. If you read it again, take it. Do we have ESV? Let's go to ESV, the same scripture. I want you to see it. Listen, God is doing something. And in this day, it's important to understand deception is everywhere. Mm. Verse number eight. The prophet is a watchman of Ephraim with my God. Yet a fowler's snare is on all his ways. Notice, if you look in the King James, it seems as if he is the trap. If you look at ESV, he is being trapped. <laughs> I, I sat down in a meeting with people who were saying, oh, this person did this to me, this person did this to me. And God said, ask the question. Did you ever say to this man you love him? Yes, I loved him. Until I realized that I was not the only one he was sleeping with. I said, wait a minute. So you were not raped. And she went like this. So by that statement, you became jealousy when you realized you were three in the relationship. Says I used to love him. Until, you know, it, she blitted the words out. I used to love him until I realized, until I realized I was not the only one he was in love with. Then what happened? It anchored me. So I've been used. No, you were not used. You were in a relationship with a man who had relationships with three people. You thought you were too special. But when you realized that you were three, you got angry. And this rap thing came in. Then I read the messages. What? I love you so much, I can't even wait. Begging to meet the man. But because the man was discovered to have three, she got angry. Some people called me, why do you stand with T.B. Joshua? I said, I stand with Christ. T.B. Joshua seems, uh, just, just happens to be one of the men of God. I, listen to me, even the people that will oppose me after watching me speak, or say what God has really told me. If they attack tomorrow, I'll be on their side. Because that's the calling I have. It's the calling I have. I used to wonder uh, an apostle like Apostle Johnson Suleiman, why he was defending Christians, defending Christians everywhere. And I realized it was his mandate. I had no mandate like that. I had not realized I had that. Until God visited me and said, why, why are you responding to this person who is attacking you? This is your child. He's a son in the ministry. According to my level, I've given you as part of the fathers of Christianity. So when somebody who is coming up and rising, no matter what calling I've given them, they're still not bigger than you. If they attack you, don't worry about it. Don't even respond. Then he said to me, I've sent you to defend even him. Imagine my anger. I'm defending the person who is attacking me. I used to even help this man, encourage people to, to watch him, encourage people to actually listen. Do you see that? God said, I do not care what you feel. All you have to do is what I want done. Now here it is. So they prophesy out of their own understanding. Hear this. Verse number eight. Watch this. The prophet is the watchman of Ephraim, but is a fowler snake in all his ways. In other words, a fowler snake is in all, he's being trapped. That means there is one office in the fivefold ministry that we call fivefold. There are many, but I would just deal with this. I don't have time to, to, to talk about. They are not five. They are five. Let's deal with five. As Brother Kenneth Hagin would put it. As our Brother Kenneth Hagin spoke of nine spiritual gifts, there are more than that. And we have uh, discovered that. Uh, was he wrong? I dealt with that. He wasn't. Now hear this. On all the fivefold ministry, there is one ministry which is the prophetic that the Bible says is being trapped. Now, 
That alone tells you that there are sins that prophets can do because they've been trapped. That means I'm by no means, I'm by no means excusing them. But I'm saying in all the ways of a prophet, there is a trap set for them. Oh, so thank you, Lord Jesus. Now watch, 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 watch. Where is the hatred in the snake? The hatred in the snake is in the house of God. It's in the house of God. It's not outside. It's in the house of God. This is where we find betrayers, in the house of God. I know you're not getting it. Uh, now, this is John 10, verse number 19. John 10, verse number 19. Let's read. John 10, verse number 19. I want you to see it. And I'm about to finish. I'm about to finish. Are you there? John 10, verse number 19. There was again a division among the Jews because of these words. Are you getting this? Let's go. Mm -hmm. Many of them said, he is a demon. He is insane. Why listen to him? <laughs> this is Jesus. Are you, are you getting this? They say Jesus is demons. Why are we listening to him? So don't, when, when, when a man of God comes out and says, yes, uh, T.B. Joshua is not a man of God. Hubert Angel is not a man of God. Kim Clement is not a man of God. These are demonic people. Uh, Oyedepo is not a man of God. is not a man of God. These are demonic people. Listen to me. Don't listen. Don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. Someone came to me and said, what do you think? I heard Damina is opposing you. I said, I don't know. I don't even know Damina myself. I have no, I have no relations with him. But what do I think of a Damina? I think he's a man of God. But he's opposing you. It doesn't matter what he says against me or against another man. He's Still a man of God. Do I like everything he says? Maybe I don't if I listen to him. But, but I don't listen to him. Once or twice somebody would say, oh, this, this thing. Uh, then I'll be like, okay, deal with it. Especially if it's a man of God. Because my members don't listen to him. So I have got people that are men of God that will then ask questions when they're doing ministry work. Then I'll go like, oh, that man. Do you understand the point? What do you think of a, an apostle in, um, in Nigeria who is opposing miracle money? I don't think nothing. Right now, I don't think nothing. God rebuked me and told me what he told me, and you, you have the record for it. But I can assure you, that is a man of God. I've seen even uh, one of the songs, um, uh, I think he ministered something to do with that city upon the cherubim, uh, um, among the cherubim. Brilliant, brilliant ministration from him. Brilliant. I'm talking about something God breathed. Brilliant. That, let, let me say something. We even have recommended it in our church. We even sing that song in London. And ask the same apostle who is attacking me. It doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not here for personal opinion. I'm here for God's opinion on a man. I, I was dragged by my own vices to a certain level. I said, what was happening? I got disappointed. And I, God came to me and rebuked me. So I support everybody. I don't care who comes and say whatever. They say nonsense. I don't care. Are they called by God? If they are called by God, that's within my mandate to defend them. Because Christianity is an attack. These people are coming to destroy everyone. They start with you, better angel. They all go to T.D. Jakes. And listen, for all that... That, that I know, T.D. Jakes, I don't think he's got anything good to say about me. But, uh, but what did I do? I rose. Defend. Why? That's my mandate. That's my mandate. Because I know he was called by God. His calling might be different from mine, but he's called by God. Are you hearing me? I see people attacking Kenneth Copeland right now. He said some very, very questionable things about people that I know are called of, of God. But now in America, he's on, in papers, on videos, being called a demon. No, he's a man of God. Does he have faults? Like anyone else, he has faults. But he is a man of God. What about Adeboye? What about Oyedepo? A man of God. Now, 
Does it mean to say you go to him, he will say good about me? I, I do not really care. I care about what God has given me. That Christianity is under attack because the devil knows he has to establish a platform in Africa. So he's using Western media because remember, Africa was under the rule of the Western world, the white community. Even Muslims were controlling Africa. So they know if they come here and speak again as one of our own, we will band together and oppose him. What a white man speaks of. True. Let me give you an example for this um, documentary that came out on TB Joshua. Here is the issue. What do you see on that video? 12 people saying they were accused, they were doing, they were, this one did this, this one did this. There's no video of him doing it. So that means if you have 12 people come up and they tell you that, oh yeah, we saw the president of Ghana doing this, we saw the president of Ghana, yes, how many are you? 15. All disgruntled members, they say something. I'm by no means saying nothing happened to them. Listen to this. I want you to listen to reasoning and to the wisdom of God. People have come up and they say this. And then you see some is, uh, one is gay. They're not going to support a Christian. They're not going to support a Christian. You can't take, see, do not accuse anyone. That's what the Bible says, an elder. Unless there are two or three witnesses. Now you see, oh yes, our witnesses. No, the Bible says seven things I had. Put it up there. Seven things I had. Seven things I had. I, I, I don't know. It says six things I yet, yet seven. Proverbs 6, 16 says, there are six things that the Lord has. Seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes. A lying tongue. <laughs> Hence that shed innocent blood. And that, that verse is important because it tells you that if you say to your brother, Racha, you have committed murder. If you hate your own brother, you have committed murder. So that is not talking about people who are cold-blooded murderers only, even you. Let's go. A heart that devises wicked plans. That means they are there. These people that devise wicked plans are there. Listen, God created 7.8 billion people. Now there are 8 point something billion people right now on earth. Of course, more people that have died and stuff like that in billions. So let's use the population that is there right now. Yet 3 billion are Christians. So you mean to say 5.2 billion people don't believe in their creator? And you wonder how can they do that? How can all of them say this? There are millions of atheists. How can people just say there's no God if, they, if, if he's actually there? That's, that's your, your stupid reasoning. How can 12 people lie? 12? You have 3 billion Christians that believe in God. Then 5.2 billion that don't believe in God. And you still ask the question, why? Why would 12 people lie? Come on. Remove whatever is in your, in your brain. Go to Hosea and see it. That because of the amount of hatred you had, or you hold, or you still have, your view now is blingered. Did I have things that were, I was against uh, T.B. Joshua on, or we, were, we didn't see eye to eye? Yeah. I, I believe the, they had a very bad relationship. I, I'm not saying he hated Cobus, uh, Prophet Cobus, but I went to preach for Prophet Cobus. In the thick of whatever uh, back and forth that, is, that was I peddled in the media, and I went to preach for, for Prophet Corbis. And, and Prophet T.B. Joshua called me when I was there, asking what is happening. I thought this was a video from way back, or was a video from now. I said, yeah, it's a video from now. So I didn't have a relationship in the sense of we were close with this man. That No, no, no. no. But we, 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 we would talk here and there. Are you getting this? There was no comparing of knots. <laughs> you know. But he was a senior prophet, and he proved it. Do you understand this? Am I against the 12 witnesses? I wasn't there. And you were not there. Let's go back to witnesses. What eyes? A lying tongue. That means God knows they are lying tongues. So there can be 20 people lying. And uh, 2 million people lying. 3 billion Christians. 5.2 billion don't believe in Christ. But they were created by the God whom they are denying. What eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. Uh -huh. 
a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil. A false witness who breathes out lies. Do you understand that lies are coming up over and over? And one who sows discord among the brothers. What these documentaries are doing are to sow discord among Christians. Then we hate each other. This one hates this one. This one thinks it's the time to rise. So I oppose this one. This one is opposing this one. This one is opposing. This. Someone is happy that you see Christianity is being cleaned. Are you joking? This is why Islam is taking over. Because they stand together. They can oppose each other behind the scenes. But when they come to the public, they're not opposing each other. They don't do it in public. I was like, oh, yeah, we have to take this. And you see what Christians are doing. They say, you know, you know, I'm allowed to attack as long as I know he's not a Christian. So most of the devil, what the devil has done is to take the scriptures and say, yes, but this one is a, not a Christian, so you can attack. Wake up, people. The Western world, the Islamic world, they are coming with their vehicles to destroy every man of God. That's what the Lord told me. To destroy every man of God. To malign him. To say a lot against them. And as long as you hold them to a certain high standard where you think they should not commit any crime and they're not faulty, you will be gullible. And in that gullibility, you have to get to a point where you say, I no longer believe in him because I've seen that he has got sins. Were you thinking he was junior Jesus? Or assistant God? Listen to me. It's high time where you know what is behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, the devil knows Africa is the one that is holding all the principles of the biblical context where they say there is no homosexuality, there is no lesbianism. African bishops have argued with the Pope. The Pope said we can marry uh, gays. The African bishop said no. Even Roman Catholics are refusing. So the devil knows it. So what do you think he wants to bring? He will bring down everyone standing against this global globalist mandate that they have, that agenda to destroy this and build a platform that accepts this, this moral decadence. So he's moving around doing it. Moving around doing it. After they finish with TB Joshua, they're coming for you. They'll come for every man of God of power. And when they are finished and done, guess what they will do? They will come for you. The ones that are thinking, oh, my prophecy has been fulfilled. What prophecy? According to Jeremiah, you prophesy out of your own desires. Your imaginations. And what prophecy after you have already met the person that is featuring in the documentary? There's no prophecy. But that doesn't make you a false prophet. That doesn't make you that you were never told what you were saying. You were told. Because there was this apostle who prophesied that there's going to be dark in January. Yes, you're giving him a hard time that he saw uh, this prophecy before. But listen, listen to this. I also prophesied that it's going to be like that. Right? My brother here in this country also prophesied about it. So you have got all these prophets prophesying one thing. But the reason behind it, I detailed it, that it will be because of ministers and other Christians, they will be paid to destroy other pastors. So the exposures you're seeing are peddled by the devil. It's not God. Check the directors. You see white names, white names. Check the directors, huh? Islamic names and white names. Black people, maybe 1%. If ever they are there, 1%. And they are exposing who? Africans. My question is, what about the atrocities that were done in Africa by the royal family from the beginning? Why can't BBC fight them? Why, when are they going to produce a video like that? Where, where is the documentary of Prince Charles? Where is the documentary of Andrew with the Ep Epson uh, Island? Where is their documentary? Where is the documentary about their own heroes as they malign them? Why didn't they come to Africa here and, and take our old ladies and ask them what happened when they colonized Africa? How they suffered? How our parents and our grandparents died? Why is there no documentary for it? But there is a document and a documentary for a man of God. Wake up. It's now a wake-up call. This is going to remain rampant 
as long as we are hoodwinked by the color of our enemy. That if they speak, it will happen. Listen to me. This is a time. Defend every man of God. Defend every woman of God. And above all, defend each other as Christians. Even in your workspaces, defend a Christian. The Bible says, love everyone. Here, here it is. I want to show you something. Because you might have a problem to, to understand. So, oh, love everyone. No. I want you to go to Galatians 6, verse number 10. I want you to see something as I close. Galatians 6, verse number 10. It says, so then, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to everyone. Now, so that means everyone is covered. But it says, especially to those who are of the Christian faith. <laughs> so the Bible says there should be a difference. You can do good out there, but when it comes to a Christian, go an extra mile. This is what Muslims have handled well. Christians are not handling well. Any man, he's not a man of God. He's not a man of God. We have already seen it. He's, so no, what is the investigation? I, I'm, I'm shocked. What is the investigation? That they investigated and 12 people have come out and said something against someone. And they're just sitting there talking. This is your investigation. And you, you say, um, we should not watch TV. We were slaves because you said we should not watch TV. Brother Branham didn't watch TV. Ben Heen has just said now that he has limited his TV time. I limited my TV time. So Ben Heen is of the devil. Brother Branham was of the devil. I, I, I had you know, good, um, good information, good ground that Oral Roberts also disdained uh, from uh, watching TV, that they, they are devils, or uh, that when somebody rings a bell and his disciples run to him, it's demonic. And I even, let me remember, I, I still say, my mandate is to defend a man of God, but I also look between the lines. Just a few days ago, uh, last week to be exact, um, I had um, a young man walk into my office, gave me audios, listen to this, audios of the people actually speaking, two of them. So I don't know the other 10. So the other 10 might be telling the truth. That's up to them. I'm talking about these two. I literally saying it, that they will do it for money. That is way before this thing came out. Years before this. They were even calling the young men saying, find us this one, find us this one. With videos, I've been shown even photos, naked photos. Of the same people who are crying on, 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 on video. Crying. Now, you can do what you want with the information I'm giving you. I've been sent by God to give you this information. And if it was because I was shown something and I came out and said this. No, I've been saying this all along. Even when people were opposing TB Joshua, I came up and said, you're wrong. Whatever his mistakes were, were his mistakes. If he did something to some one of these witnesses, listen, let the law take it, its course. Oh, you might say, oh, can't do that because he's dead. No, you can do that. The church is still there. It's an organization. It's still there. But for Christians to go with the attacker because you hate a man or you doubt the best thing if you don't know nothing and you are not there. Shush. Shut up. Don't bring cases to yourself for nothing. The warning from God is they will do this. And within a few years, you will see, countries will say, yeah, we have accepted gays in this Africa. Hear from my mouth. I'm a prophet and I'm telling you, within a few years, it's not going to take even three years. Remain like this, where a person comes out and attacks your own people and you're okay with it. Do you think our black people are so stupid they can't be journalists? They can't be investigative journalists? They are. Let them do their own work. Let Africa control Africa. Let Africa fight Africa. Let Africa, let us do our own nonsense here. Let's do our own investigations here. We don't need a white person to come from there to tell us that our people are bad. Do your thing. Notice here, revival is happening everywhere in Africa. But only when it comes on a white person's television, 
does it become a revival? You see one person standing up from a wheelchair, two people a day, and they say, revival is started, it's on TV. Then they give it a name. And then they push books to Africa to tell us who, are, who the generals of God are. Brothers and sisters, we know people in the same country I'm in now, in Southern Africa here. We know people that are not known, who are crazy. I, I would have... Um, um, man that is coming up now uh, called William Braham, not Branham. It's called Prophet William Braham. Sit down with him like this. On his knees, two, three days. Didn't get to three days. Two and a half, almost, days on his knees praying. We're talking about 50 some hours. The man on his knees like this. And you lie on the floor. And, and then after that, you would have a notebook writing down. This is what is going to happen on this day, on this day, and it it's happening. Do you know him? I just mentioned it for the first time here. Did you know him? You didn't know. So just imagine. It's not something you will sleep here and the man is still praying in there. Non-stop. Not, uh, um, I just need to rest. No. I've done days in one room, but those days will be like you get into a vision, you do this, and you sing, you get into a trance, you get into a dream, you get into this. So there were alternative, no, on your knees, almost three days on one issue. And after you do for that one issue, you say, this is it. And guess what? Even if he becomes popular, that man, you will come here, you will oppose him. If Jesus at a church next door, you would have a documentary for Jesus. And on that bombshell, I stop here. But listen to this. Everyone, God has spoken to me. Defend the Christians. Defend Christianity. And I want to put this disclaimer. I'm by no means saying the other 10 are wrong in what they are saying. They are saying lies. I'm not saying that. Let the Lord take his course. I, my wish is the statutory limitation should be put in place. That if you are being raped by someone or you've been raped by someone, you have at least two years or three years to report your case. Not come 20, 30 years after. There is no proof of what people are saying. People just come and say, I was raped. Where? Yeah, in the other room that is there. What? There's no proof. Let it be, let there be a such a limitation. That's what I, this, this is my opinion. It has nothing to do with what God told me. This is my opinion as a man. But what God told me is defend Christians. Keep defending them. I'm telling you, keep defending them. Keep defending Christians. Don't, 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 don't drop the ball. Africa will be run over by these people with queer lifestyles. Because as Christians, we can't defend Christians. We let the men of God being atta be attacked. Then this one will be attacked, that one will be attacked, that one will be attacked. Until all the fathers are attacked and we are left with young men with no honor. And that's when Christianity will be destroyed. It's high time. I pray for you in the name of Jesus, that you be not deceived, that you be one of the wise people, that you have got that wisdom, that Abaddon and Movet, that Natus and destruction said we search for. Let that wisdom be with you in the name of Jesus. May you have peace all the days of your life. May your family find peace. I speak. May you have communication with the divine entity we call God. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and declare right this minute, your trouble is over, your pain is over, your drought is over. The days of deception, you'll be able to catch the truth inside the deception. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Don't say, when Africa does not do this, don't say it had not been warned, because I've warned you. Listen, all of around the world, we love you so much, viewers around the world. That's why I don't have people on the set today. 
I needed to deliver a message. There is a way God is trying to avenge the people in the Old Testament who were killed in the Old Testament. And he can only do it when he sends a prophet and an apostle and you attack them. The only problem we have on earth now is apostles are attacking prophets and prophets are attacking apostles. So there's no unity. These are the two offices that should actually be united. It's high time we unite. It's high time we take over. The world is waiting for us. Christianity is waiting for us to unite. And those around the world, of course, this is our time for tithing and our, our giving. Give right now. The promptings are on your screen. And we thank you for your giving and your offerings. Just do it right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, for this offering, for this seed, Father, I decree and declare, it is blessed, it is ancient, it is anointed, it is sanctified right this minute. And wherever they have taken it from, replenish it in the name of Jesus. Go and give your tithing and your offering. The, the promptings are on your screen. And make sure that God is in your houses. And remember, when they asked Jesus, they said, what is happening? What is the sign of your coming? And he said this one, deception. Be careful that you be not deceived. So deception is the main sign that he is coming there. I love you all. This is Prophet Hubert Angel. See you in the next broadcast.